Well, this one is very exciting for me. It covers um, a re really a large amount of territory because uh, beams from diode lasers, uh, that is semiconductor lasers, or solid state lasers, or other kinds of lasers, uh, can all occur. And with beam combining, it allows one to uh, get a stronger beam that is constructed out of the energy uh, or power that's in many beams. And it might be easier to make those many beams and then transform the power into a single beam. And in doing so, um, there are many, many techniques, there are many ways to do it, but it seems to have matured very rapidly to, um, to the circumstance we have today where, um, uh, where a large number of uh, activities around the world are concentrating on, on making more powerful beams in this, in this way. Um, there is a tutorial by James Ledger, a one-hour tutorial which, by Professor James Ledger. Uh, and there are several invited talks that are of importance to me. Um, there is fiber amplifiers using diffractive optical elements. And uh, there is also beam combining in uh, multi-core fiber amplifiers. That seems very interesting to me because uh, with multiple cores, you can um, you can just use much less equipment to uh, make a particular uh, set of multiple gain media. There is a joint session on uh, a number of high energy situations, including X-ray sources. It's called uh, it's called Clio slash Quells Seven or Zero Seven, which um, which combines um, uh, a lot of work done at the National Laboratories, a lot of work done at Stanford Linear Accelerator, uh, various accelerator facilities in Germany, uh, and numerous other facilities around the, around the world. One of the cool things where there's a, a nice crossover to, to condensed matter physics is actually also related to um, uh, optical lattices. So, so um, there's one group, for example, so Marcus Greiner's group has um, has made this really nice configuration where they can make, basically make an optical lattice, which is kind of like an egg crate for atoms, so in two dimensions. So, and, and they can actually image all of the atoms individually in these separate sites. So they can, they can actually look at this with really high resolution, just unprecedented resolution, and see the different atoms in the different lattice sites. And sort of one reason that that's important that they, is they've actually done this in a regime where the atoms are pretty close together. So much closer, to, I mean, so people have sort of done this by making the optical lattice very big so the atoms are pretty far apart and so it's easy to resolve them. But in this case, they're very close together, and the reason that's important is that the atoms can actually see each other. They're close enough to see each other because they can tunnel back and forth between different lattice sites. And so this is actually a, a model for, um, for high TC superconductivity. So instead of, because those experiments are very hard to do, you know, you have a bunch of atoms sort of strongly correlated in some solid. In this case, the atoms are, an, you know, the analog of the electrons. And um, you can actually, because you can see them directly, you might be able to get much more insight into, you know, really hard condensed matter problems um, where there's sort of been, you know, it's very, been very hard to make progress for decades. So Marcus Greiner is, will be talking about this exact issue with, with so he's built this, this quantum gas microscope, so where you can see these atoms in, in a lot of detail. And the other, the other keynote speaker is, um, is from Marcus Aspelmeyer's group. Um, so this is, this is on this issue of, of coupling uh, an optical cavity, or, well, basically coupling light in a cavity to a resonator, to some, some mechanical degree of freedom. Of a resonator. So I was sort of talking about um, cavities as, as you know, sort of two mirrors that would trap light in between them. But w another way um, to do this is is a, called a microtoroid. So where you'd actually have the the light sort of orbiting around the the edge of it. So it's very much like a microdisc laser, except it's not an active medium. So you'd actually introduce light from some other source and then yeah. trap it in here. And then the advantage is that it has a very, it has a very, or the light will stay there for a very long time. So it's very coherent. <laughs>